Hello and welcome to Fireside History. Today we're going to discuss La Barna. La Barna is a mysterious figure of Hittite history. He at some point succeeded Anida and became king of the same lands as Anita. Now, what we know about Labarna is very little, and we typically have to rely upon the proclamation of Telepinu, which came uh, along centuries later. And today I'm going to read you um, a part of this proclamation. Formerly, Labarna was the great king. Then were his sons, his brothers, his relations by marriage, his blood relations, and his troops united. And the land was small. But on whatever campaign he went, he held the lands of the enemy in subjugation by his might. He kept devastating the lands, and he deprived the lands of power, and he made them boundaries of the sea. But when he returned from the field, each of his sons went to the various lands to govern them. Hups, Hupisna, Tuanua, Nanasa, Landa, Zalara, Parsuhanta, Lushna. These were the lands they governed. The large towns were assigned to them. And, well, I know that this makes it a rather small video, but um, that's about it to the proclamation and I'll offer a bit more insight into uh, the post Labarna era and the king or kings who came after him with the only the parting comment that Labarna it was a king who came to power uh, shortly after the collapse of Anita's kingdom so what we do know is Anita's realm collapsed, which left Labarna with a smaller realm to govern, so that the political landscape was relatively changed. We don't know if Labarna belongs to the same dynasty as Anita, um, though that's an assumption. So, But a lot of what we know about this era of Hittite history is based off of assumptions, um, because the, the evidence is very fragmentary. Now, there's a great list of cities so obviously Labarna was a conquering king and one who thrived off of uh, military exploits and his name apparently became the main uh, cognomen uh, the main kind of title for later kings of the Hittites notably uh, they would notably similar to uh, the title of Caesar and how every succeeding man after Julius Caesar took on the, the name Caesar even when Augustus's line ended. They also took up the name Augustus. So, you know, it's there's a bit of a similar trend here. And centuries later, I suspect they tried to build up Labarna into a greater man than what he was to an, ex to an extent by calling him a great king when at the time he would have been one of many uh, small um, he would have ruled over a very very small area uh, and was one of many petty kings in Anatolia so that's all we have for you today next time uh, we'll continue with the tale of Hattushili um, the alleged successor of Labarna. So until then, uh, like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Oh, and hit that notification bell, please.